So the truck I'm standing underneath right now is my father's. This is my father's 2017 Colorado diesel. Um, he bought this truck brand new. I sprayed this truck with fluid film when it literally had, I think like 200 miles on it. And uh, those of you that have been, you know, kind of following along on this series, I basically give you guys a year by year update on what the bottom of the truck looks like, how is the product performing, and uh, are there any detrimental effects of doing this to your car. So like I said, I'm on year four going into year five with this particular truck. Um, and I'll take you guys around and show you, really not much of anything has changed since last year. Um, one thing that has changed since last year is he bought some property in Southern Ohio, kind of near Salt Fork Lake, if uh, any of you guys know where that is. Um, but basically he bought a cornfield and he's been looking at putting a building on this cornfield. Well, he's been driving his truck around in this cornfield most of the spring and summer. So I'll take you guys around and show you, but there's a, there's quite a few areas that the fluid film is gone strictly from abrasion of, you know, one foot or two foot long corn stalks that he's been driving through. So like the front of the axle, nothing on it. Bottom of the frame is pretty well wore off and uh, some like the front control arms and stuff, there's not much on the bottoms of those at all. But I'll take you around and show you guys uh, how what the bottom of this thing really looks like. So guys, this vehicle is now four years old. Um, it's going into its fifth winter. And as you guys can see, there's not much rust really to speak of. Um, like I told you guys a second ago, like the bottom of these cross members and stuff because he was driving around in a cornfield. You know, it's all pretty much worn away on the, some of the cross members, you know, the bottom of the control arms and stuff like that. But if you look around at the back, you know, there's still a ton of it on there. So as you guys can see, underneath the coating, the frame virtually looks new. Um, you really cannot tell that this vehicle is four years old and been daily driven in Ohio for, like I said, four years. Um, typically on average, we will get between uh, 50 and 80 inches of snow a year. And uh, realistically guys, if you guys want your car to look better than this, um, the only thing you're gonna do is simply don't drive it in the winter. Um, I don't know what else you're, you guys are gonna do to uh, alleviate any rust. I mean, as you can see, you know, there's a little bit on the exhaust, but again, the exhaust gets so hot that fluid film or any other product isn't gonna stick. It's just gonna burn off anyway. But we're gonna do some looking here too, guys. Like I've got a bore scope. We're gonna go inside like these rocker panels and start actually looking for rust at this point. Um, because quite simply on the outside, I can't really find much of any. All right, so this is some 22nd century stuff here. I have an iPad aimed at the camera and I'm using a bore scope. And this came from one of the comments in the, the previous video. Uh, somebody wanted to see the inside of the rocker panels, inside of the frame and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna do as best I can to not give you guys epilepsy and show you guys the inside of the rocker panels, inside of the frame. What does all that stuff actually look like? So this is gonna be inside the cab corner. I'm gonna do as best I can for you guys to try and you know navigate things, but it's not gonna be pretty, it's not gonna be elegant, but you guys should be able to get a good uh, visual representation as to how everything looks inside. I understand this isn't the easiest thing to make out, but running this bore scope is not the, uh, the easiest thing in the world either. So I mean, inside the frame, inside the rockers, um, I even went inside like the rocker supports right here. And I mean, there's nothing inside any of this stuff. All of it looks still really, really good. So as you guys can see, you know, after four years, I don't even have any rust on the inside of anything, which is pretty impressive. Okay, so real quick, this is what my dad's truck looks like after I got it sprayed. Um, I did use Surface Shield on this thing this year. Now, there isn't gonna be any issues with uh, Surface Shield being incompatible with the fluid film that's already on the surface. They're fully compatible with one another. You're not gonna have an issue with, you know, incompatibility switching between the two like this. So. This is what it looks like, guys. Now, I can't guarantee uh, 
you know, the bottoms of these control arms aren't going to get uh, abraded off like they were this past year because, like I said, he's been driving through a cornfield. So I'm sure he's going to do more of that this year. So this truck isn't going to be a good AB comparison between uh, fluid film and the uh, surface shield. We'll use mine for that. All right, so the next vehicle we're going to take a look at is my own. So this is my 2017 Colorado. I'm going to get it up on the lift and we're going to take a look and see what it looks like. So this is my 2017 Colorado that has been exposed to a Northeastern Ohio winter for three years now. It's going into its fourth winter. And as you guys can see, there is virtually no rust anywhere other than the exhaust. Um, you know, all the rockers, the frame, all that stuff. Really, there isn't much rust to speak of at all. I mean, guys, let's be serious. Check out the emergency brake cable. This is a 2017, it's 2021. How many four-year-old vehicles in Ohio have emergency brake cables with no rust on them? Not many. So moving back toward the back, this is where we get into uh, what we're gonna talk about a little bit later. This is the uh, fluid film versus the wool wax testing. And I don't know if you guys can see a drastic difference between those two but I sure as heck don't. Um, you know, obviously moving back further back, there's a little bit of rust there. That's where the spare tire has been, you know, rubbing on the cross member. I've got another spot over here the same way that, you know, realistically, there probably isn't a whole lot you're gonna do about that, except for, you know, spray it with more fluid film or wool wax or surface shield or whatever product of your choosing that you're gonna use. So guys, without question, I think it's pretty hard to dispute that this, at this point that these lanolin products that I've been using do in fact work. They do in fact work well, and I'm gonna wear this truck out before it rusts out at this rate. So this is inside of the frame, uh, looking toward the front of the truck, and I'm doing as best I can to show you guys what this looks like, but. It's very hard to keep the, uh, the bore scope steady. So that's what the inside of the frame looks like. I understand you can't really see a whole lot. Um, here is like the inside of the rockers. That is what the inside of the rocker panel looks like. And as you guys can see, there's a boatload of fluid film in there, but there's no rust in there whatsoever. So. Going in some of these other holes, it's pretty much the same deal. Um, you know, no real rust anywhere to speak of, and a bunch of fluid film in there. So this one I'm showing you right now is the crack between the top of the wheel well and the side of the bed. This is where, like, when your bedsides start to rot out, this is where they start to rust, right in this crack. That's where it starts, and eventually it works its way to the outside of the truck. And as you guys can see, there's virtually nothing here. Guys, I'll link this bore scope down in the description for you guys. If you guys are looking for a bore scope, I highly recommend this thing. It's completely wireless. Um, you know, wireless this iPad works with Apple and Android. I just use this iPad because, well, it's the screen's bigger. But the only downside to doing what I'm doing here is it's real easy for fluid film to get down on the lens. And once fluid film gets on the lens, I gotta pull it back out of wherever I'm at wipe it off so you guys can you know see what the heck is going on all right so now that we got some of the pleasantries out of the way and you know what the bottom of the truck looks like um, we're going to really dive in and take a look at the wool wax versus the fluid film uh, after a year you know what held up better but just taking a look here guys it isn't a drastic difference this is the driver's side of the axle this was hit with wool wax just like the driver's side of the frame and the driver's rocker panel was hit with wool wax. So this was hit with wool wax. Up here, this is wool wax and the frame section over here is wool wax as well. Now, if you guys take a look and you compare the driver's side to the passenger side that was hit with fluid film, guys, I don't see a drastic change between the two. Um, one thing I will say is if you notice here, there is like some abrasive wear, like I was running stuff over with this axle. And what that is, my dad bought some property down in Southern Ohio and uh, he basically bought a harvested cornfield. And if 
any of you guys know what a harvested cornfield looks like? I was basically running over the stems and the stalks and stuff like that. So that's where some of that abrasive sort of wear on the bottom of the axle comes from. That's what that's from. But uh, as far as the top, guys, I don't see I don't see a drastic change between the two. Um, You know, people get in my comment section and they'll swear up and down that one works better than the other. But personally, guys, I'm not really seeing it. So this was fluid film. And lo and behold, it looks pretty much like the driver's side. So guys, use what you want to use. At the end of the day, I really don't care what you spray your truck with. Use what works for you because as far as I can tell on this truck in my environment, guys, there's no difference between them. So guys, what can we take out of this? Is wool wax better than fluid film? Is fluid film better than wool wax? Guys, that's up to you. Um, at the end of the day, I don't see a huge change in rust from one side versus the other. It really comes down to the product that you like, the product that you can get, and is the price right? Um, Really looking at the two side by side, the biggest difference that I see is the wool wax side has a little bit more built up on top of the axle just where it didn't get abraded away by the harvested corn that I was driving through. But it's not drastic, guys. It's not, it's not a night and day difference. And realistically, unless I told you guys and unless I had the video footage, you guys would never even know. So as far as the undercoating product that I'm gonna be using on this truck this year, I'm actually gonna be using uh, Blaster Surface Shield. Like I told you guys back in the video back in July, I'm pretty much gonna be transitioning to this stuff exclusively. Uh, I'm slowly sort of working through my uh, wool wax, my fluid film that I have in stock. And I'll show you guys the material safety data sheets. There's some reasons why I'm using this stuff as opposed to fluid film or wool wax. It's not just me pulling something out of the air. There's actual product ingredient differences and testing that I've done that justify my change. So since the bulk one gallon, five gallon sizes are not available yet in uh, November of 2021, I'm gonna go ahead and coat this whole truck with aerosol cans. Now, this is only the second vehicle that I've ever coated with aerosol cans. And there's a couple things that I noticed right off the bat compared to using my traditional um, professional spray gun that I use that's you know powered by compressed air. The biggest difference that I notice is the throw distance. Using compressed air to spray the product as opposed to an aerosol can, the professional spray gun will push the product a lot further. So it'll come out roundabouts two feet off the end of the gun. So anything within two feet of the end of the gun, I can spray it. So when you get into a confined area, it helps big time because you can just aim it in the general direction of where you want the coating to go and it'll end up there. The difference is with the aerosol can, the aerosol can, it only goes out about a foot. So when, like I said, when you get into a confined space, you, it's a lot harder to get confined areas with the aerosol can because it doesn't have as much force coming out of the can as what it does coming out of the professional spray gun. Um, the other reason I did this is because I knew I had a, there's a bunch of people out there that don't have compressed air at the house that they want to do this with aerosol cans. So to me, it gives me a good idea how many cans you're going to need for a specific vehicle size. So for this uh, Chevy Colorado, I use six cans. So like a half ton truck, I would use six cans. If you got something bigger than a half ton truck, obviously picks up, pick up, you know, eight, 10 cans, whatever you need. Um, something smaller like a Honda Civic, something like that, especially unibody vehicles that don't have as many like, uh, you know, sort of crevices and, uh, you know, a full frame to coat and things like that. Like a Honda Civic, I would do like three cans. It's, it's really not all that much that you would need for a vehicle like that compared to a pickup truck or a full frame vehicle. The next thing we're going to talk about real quick is going to be the, uh, the inner cavity wand for the aerosol cans. If you guys remember back to July, the traditional uh, fluid film, wool wax, inner cavity wand does not work with the, the surface shield cans. And this is one of the great things about comment sections is there's people out there that are a lot smarter than me and have a lot more experience with certain things than what I do. And what they suggested 
was graffiti adapters and I bought some and they work fantastic. I'll link them in the description. So the way these work is they take a male can like this and they will convert it to a female. So if you look, this works now. So one thing I wanted to talk about real quick was gonna be SDSs on these three products. Why am I bringing this up? Because if you guys look at any of the SDSs for any of these products out on the market, if you go to section three of an SDS or safety data sheet, it will tell you the basically the, most of the ingredients in the product. And most importantly, the harmful ingredients in the product if you were to like drink it or something like that. The reason that I'm bringing this up is because there are fundamental product formulation differences between these three products. I had some comments on the Serpent Shield video that I shot back in July. People basically just calling me a corporate shill and basically telling me that I'm full of crap. So it's real easy if you guys look at the SDSs to see that there are differences between these products and there is a reason why I'm using Surface Shield instead of Fluid Film or Wool Wax. Um, at the end of the day, if you can't get Surface Shield, by all means, use Fluid Film. I don't care. Um, but if you look at Fluid Film on the SDS, they list refined petroleum oil, hydro-treated paraffinic wax, calcium petroleum sulfate. That is what is in it. So that's all that they're willing to tell you. If you take a look at Wool Wax Section 3, the only product or the only chemical they list is lanolin. They're saying lanolin makes up between 60 and 100% of their product. There obviously has to be some other things in there for fragrance and color and things like that, especially if you're spraying the black product. If you guys take a look at one of the undercoating comparison videos that I shot, I'll put a card up to it up in the corner and it'll, I'll take you right to the spot in the video where I talk about it. One of the best undercoating products that I found for a homebrew product was Vaseline. You know what Vaseline is? Petroleum jelly. So if you take a look at the SDS for Surface Shield, uh, they list a few ingredients obviously. So first of which, petroleum. Next, hydro treated heavy napathic. I think I'm saying that right. I'm not a chemist. Um, next thing on the list, Petroleum jelly. Next thing on the list, calcium organic mixture, whatever that, you know, whatever re really that means. Next thing, lanolin fatty acids, and finally, wool wax. Now, before any of you go, oh, they're just taking wool wax and dumping it into the surface shield and mixing it with a petroleum jelly, and there you go. No, they're not buying wool wax off the shelf and mixing it with petroleum jelly. You may be able to do that if you guys want to do a homebrew solution, possibly. But at any rate, wool wax, as they're listing it here, is another name for lanolin. So lanolin fatty acids is one ingredient. Next ingredient essentially is lanolin. Guys, I'll put links to all these SDSs if you want to check them. If you think I'm full of crap, feel free to uh, you know go check it out for yourself. I got nothing to hide here. So for any of you that have been following this series over the past couple of years, you'll know my biggest issue with fluid film has always been its uh, wash off ability. There's certain places on the vehicle where without fail, it pretty much gets washed off every year like you see on you know the, the axles and stuff. The difference between surface shield and fluid film is yes, they're both lanolin based and they both have lanolin in them, but the difference between fluid film and surface shield is when the lanolin gets washed away, Surface Shield still has petroleum jelly in it, and that petroleum jelly will still continue to adhere to the surface. That is the difference. So I'm sure at this point some of you are going, well, if Surface Shield's such a great product, why don't you test it against something else like you tested Wool Wax against Fluid Film last year? Okay, we can do that. Okay, so it's the next morning. As you guys can see, I've got everything all pressure washed off. I left the shop heater on all night, uh, made sure everything was all dried out for the morning. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this half of the axle and spray it with blaster. Uh, the passenger side of the axle, I'm gonna spray with wool wax. Now I'm sure some of you at this point are probably going, well, why aren't you comparing it to fluid film? Cause that's what you were already using. My pole test that I have running outside, out of my telephone pole, already tells me that this is gonna hold up better than fluid film. So 
For me, there's really no point in comparing it to fluid film because I already have the data that shows that blaster holds up better. So, with that in mind, we're gonna compare it to wool wax. So like I said, I'm gonna flip flop where the wool wax was this year versus last year, just in case, you know, one side of the vehicle is somehow getting sprayed with more water than the other side. We may be able to see any tangible difference. I highly doubt it, but I'm gonna conduct the test the exact same way I did last year. So the front of the axle, bottom of the rockers, outboard section of the frame on both sides of the truck and uh, with each product. And hopefully we'll come back in a year, see if there's any tangible difference. All right guys, so this is what it looks like after three years going into four. And as you guys can see, there, like I said, there isn't any rust really to speak of. Um, but this is how I'm leaving things for this year. So over here on the uh, passenger side of the axle, we have wool wax. On the passenger side of the frame over here, we have wool wax. On the rocker panel, we have wool wax. Over here on the driver's side, this is all surface shield uh, out of the aerosol cans. And over here on the driver's side of the frame, same deal, surface shield out of the aerosol can. So we'll see uh, how this stuff holds up compared to wool wax. But like I told you guys earlier in the video, there are some fundamental differences in the formulation that help this stuff cling to the surface compared to some of the other products on the market. So the rest of this truck got completely coated in surface shield. Like I told you guys, I'm gonna be transitioning over to surface shield 100%, especially when the, uh, you know, the bulk one gallon, five gallon sizes are, you know, more available. But uh, at this point, I really didn't have any issue finding any aerosol cans. They were locally available. I know that isn't the case for everybody out there, but at any rate, this is what the truck looks like. This is what it looks like going into uh, its fourth winter. So guys, that is what both trucks look like. Um, I understand I'm not showing you anything uh, that different than I showed you last year. And ideally, you know, that's how it's supposed to be. But unfortunately, I sort of feel like a broken record because I'm just making the same video over and over and over again. But you guys keep watching them. So as long as you guys are willing to watch them, I'm willing to make them. So with that in mind, I'm going to keep going with this as long as you guys, you know, are good with this sort of content. It's just for me as a creator and me trying to come up with ideas, it's like, it's just very, very redundant for me to come out here and shoot this basically the exact same video every year. Um, obviously there's interest in this stuff because like I said, first of all, my videos on this update every year get a decent amount of hits. And secondly, there's other people out online starting to do what I'm doing here. Well, they'll have a car that's maybe five or six years old, they'll start coding it and they'll give you a year by year update on their vehicle as well. So there's plenty of content out there as far as this stuff. Um, but as long as you guys are willing to watch me make this video every year, I'm willing to shoot it for you. Like I said, for me, it's just getting a little redundant. With that guys, I'll have links down in the description to the surface shield, to the fluid film, to the wool wax, as well as the professional spray gun for the bulk, as well as the aerosol can adapters and the spray nozzles for the aerosol cans like I showed you in the video. Um, as always guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. You wanna see more content, go down, smack subscribe for me. Thanks for watching guys. Mm -hmm.